All right, we're talking Xfinity Series at Richmond. Real quick, April 1st is right around the corner, literally hours away. If you watch our stuff, if you're thinking of supporting Pierce and myself, join Patreon. Just wait for the first so you don't get charged second. Like, if you join today on the 31st, they'll just charge you again tomorrow, which, if you want to do that, hey, by all means, feel free. I'm just giving you a warning that's what's going to happen because we don't refund people. We don't do the, oh, you know, join for this weekend, then we'll refund. We, we just don't. Man, we don't have time for that, okay? It's two of us doing everything. We, we can't just be refunding people secondly if you're not watching pierce's content what are you guys doing i've been getting stuff ready because i gotta go out of town on april 11th i'm gonna be out of town for two weeks taking the camera taking the microphone but i got to at least get everything ready for basically being gone for two and a half almost three weeks in april um still gonna be making content just i have to get a lot of stuff ready for that both for this and just other things around the apartment and everything here and um, Pierce has been killing it with the pit data videos. That was what I was going to focus primarily on this week, but he beat me to it, and it's there, man. It You, you need to, and you can already see it, man. We, we've been talking about pit data this whole year. We're the only ones. I mean, this is, yet again, not me talking like, oh, I'm the biggest, baddest, you know, guy out here, but nobody else was talking pit data. Nobody else was talking pit numbers, Okay. It's all kind of slowly getting out there. So if you want if you want a good sheet, if you're already on the sheets, you already know how good it is, how easy it is to read. The amount of data there is immeasurable. It, it You can go in there for hours and hours and find stuff, or you can just use really the first page, and you can see where everybody's categorized in terms of who has the fastest pit stops, who ha, who's just been mo the most consistent for all the series. This, these races, specifically at short tracks, are being... One on pit road, whether it's Xfinity, whether it's trucks, whether it's Cup Series, it's going to be decided on pit road. It's difficult to pass, difficult to pass at Phoenix due to the resin, difficult to pass at Richmond just due to the track being a one groove racetrack. It you're going to see it at Martinsville. It's going to be difficult to pass. Pit positions are going to be gained and lost on pit road. So that's the first real thing I want to talk about. Secondly, let's get Pierce up to a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I'd like him to be monetized. I think that'd be great. I think he's at like 750 right now. If we can get him up to a thousand by at least the end of April, that's a really big time frame. But I'd like to get people there. Okay. Um, secondly, uh, thirdly, for whatever point of emphasis I am on right now, uh, yet again, just thank you for the support on Patreon. We do appreciate it. I appreciate it. Pierce does. Just thank you for all the uh, support here. So moving on to the. Uh, Xfinity at Richmond, and yet again, it's more so just me here because it's early in the week. I'll be looking through sheets, can't really put that on the screen, so you'll just have to look at me because people don't like it just being a static image of my logo. So moving on, um, Pierce brought up in the video earlier today talking about a qualifying position and just curious where Jones and Allgaier were prior to COVID happening. Can I even say that word anymore? It doesn't even exist. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> when you get to Jones and, and Allgaier before COVID happened, when they went to the qualifying being set by a matrix, where, like, did Jones and Allgaier kind of forget how to qualify? Did they not? Where were they at? So I looked at both Jones and Allgaier in, in general because Allgaier is going to be... Let's talk about Allgaier first off. The, the main, or let's talk about the guys that I want to talk about that I'm interested at Richmond right off the bat, and then we'll kind of break down into the uh, Justin Allgaier and everybody else. Uh, the, there's four guys that I want to chase for this race. And let, actually, let's bring this up on the screen really quick. I know I just said I wasn't going to bring anything up on the screen, but we are here looking at lines. Knowing how I build for short tracks, this is the player pool that I'm most likely going to be using. I can, and this is set up by uh, by pricing, I can already tell. I'll be up here, and I'll be down here. There is no in-between. I do not think, if because for a majority of my lines, I'm going to be using a, a three-lap, uh, chasing three-lap leaders here. Uh, there's, it's going to be really, oops, it's going to be really difficult for me to uh, land in the high sixes and low 7k range just due to the fact how I believe my lineups are going to be made that could change and it probably will change based on projections of what I project everybody at but uh, right now I'm looking at double punting 
possibly even chip, triple punting and targeting the guys that I want to target here. And these are the four, not Jones, these are the four gentlemen that I want to target here. These are the four guys that I want to chase um, for most of my lines. And I'm going to try and, mo and I'm going to be way over the field on Josh Berry. That's just how it's going to be right here. Um, I don't believe, even when we looked at John Hernimacek, and I talked about John Hernimacek early in February, January, I looked at his laps at Dover, and I believe I looked at his laps at Richmond. If I didn't do it in the video, I know I looked at him at least, when he was running the John, the, uh, the Sam Hunt 26 car. And this and and Richmond and Dover were the two races last year where he had speed in that car. Now, did he, you know, run away with that race? No, he did not. Did he have that extra push to get him to be the primary lap leader in the Richmond race? No, he did not. But this is a race where I do believe that we're going to see John Hernimacek run in the top five. Do we see him getting that push, the pick push as in pit crew, to get the lead? I don't think that the Sam Hunt pit crew is going to have it. I think we're going to have like people like John Hermiewicz, people like Ryan Priest, people like uh, Hemrick run between fourth and seventh all day and not really do anything with it. Just kind of end up riding there. Whereas we're going to have people like Josh Berry, who I believe is going to run extremely well at this track. We're going to have Ty Gibbs, who clearly had the best car at this track last year. Gregson, who has been on fire, who had the best car at Phoenix. I went in liking him. Same reasons here um, to Phoenix. I like these guys going in. And then Allgaier, this is one of Allgaier's statistically best tracks, and that's why I brought up the Allgaier qualifying and the I got and, and the Brandon Jones um, qualifying stuff. Is uh, These are the four guys entering this week that I want to do. Um, people always ask me in terms of like betting and stuff early in the week. I like Josh Berry, uh, but personally between any of these four guys to win, whoever had the best odds uh, is probably who I would take there. But yet again, I can't bet here in Texas. So I always feel like I'm like not answering those things truthfully because I can't bet here in Texas, but, but you can use prize picks. Prize picks sucks for NASCAR. Just, I, I, I'm almost disappointed that I even offer that on, uh, on my little heat map because they take forever to come out. Um, in terms of punting, uh, we're going to be down here at the bottom. That's just how it's going to be. Um, Matt Mills, one of Matt Mills' best tracks, oddly enough. Raja Carruth uh, in the Tommy Joe Martins car. It's going to be interesting, man. Late model, short track guy right here. Time to nut up or shut up. I've actually um, raced with Raja enough, and the poor man has no idea I even exist. I have him, I'm friends with him on Facebook, friends with him on Discord. We've raced together, and he just doesn't know who I am. There's no way. And he shouldn't. There's no reason to. Um, but uh, at least we've raced together on iRacing, okay? Yeah, I'm so I'm so connected. Man, the inner I'm in the inner circle of who is, who is he with? Um, not f five, fourth, I don't remember the team. Whatever the case is, <laughs> Joe Graf Jr. going to be really difficult to want to play him here. Uh, Josh Williams, let me let me move this stuff over real quick. See, we're here. I guess I guess we are showing stuff at this point. Who 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 cares, man? I guess I'm just an idiot most of the time. Uh, let me move this over here as well. So maybe I lied. Maybe we will just keep showing stuff because I feel like I, people are nothing. I feel like I show nothing here, but people uh, feel like they do. Anyway, moving on. Joe Graff Jr. blows. Uh, he's one of the worst drivers in NASCAR. <laughs> uh, Josh Williams for BJ McLeod. I am interested in Josh Williams. I would much rather go with him over, jo over Joey Gase because I don't necessarily see this being a race of attrition. Now, I can very easily get there. Like a drop of a nail, we can have these guys end up wrecking each other towards the end of this race. But... If I had to look at one team that I think is going to go laps down, despite the fact that they ran an old... So Kligerman was running a uh, an old Joe Gibbs Racing car, and they leased a Toyota engine for Park Kligerman at Coda. I think Gaze is going to be smart with his money. I don't believe that he's going to be doing this here, because he's he's just they're just trying to survive. This is not a place where they even have a remote shot, even if they had a good car to do well. The road courses are. Um, so I'm not interested in Joey Gaze. I'm interested in Stephen Parsons. Uh, same thing. I'm pretty sure was Parsons chalk here in the last race. I feel like this is one of them. I feel like so. Like last year, everybody was goo goo gaga 
over Stephen Parsons, and nobody's even talked about him this entire year. Maybe just burning the people <laughs> at these other ones. I've been playing. I've been throwing Parsons in and out of lineups uh, this whole year, um, but and he certainly hasn't been talked up um, at the amount that I thought they would be. Uh, obviously, Ryan Vargas is just yet again. I'm finally slowly converting people over to the fact that Vargas is just a crybaby. <laughs> He's very emotional. He's an emotional wreck. Uh, Howie in the Tommy Joe Martin's car. So this is what I mean. When we look at in terms of good cars, and I I need to change. I don't know where to change this stuff at because like not that I don't know where to change it, but I mean this stuff is always here, but I never use it. But like Raj is going to have the best car under six thousand dollars. The next best car in that is Howie at five thousand dollars. Now does everybody go to Howie? Because he's five thousand dollars in Tommy Joe Martins. Do we see Raja Karuth and Howie carry a majority of this ownership? I would argue yes. The only saving grace that they might have is that these guys might qualify inside the twenties. If they still do that, I'm fine. I don't think we're gonna have massive place differential plays in the back unless people just completely crap the bed in qualifying. Now David Starr, uh Bobby Dodder bought the points from the ninety two uh DGM machine because that was a part-time ride anyway and uh david star is now pretty much they're they're now locked in bobby daughter running pretty decent cars no longer has to worry about not making the field due to david star being too damn slow to qualify into the race so david star will ra will make this race so when we get there i'm not playing jesse awuji there is no way i What's the odds that a Wooji causes a wreck some point in this race? The man was all over the place uh, in, in these races, man. And, and he's going to be he's, he's gonna be lap traffic. The field's only saving grace is for Jesse Wooji to not make the race. Uh, but I'm not playing Jesse Wooji. I am very interested in Dylan Bassett. And the Bassett brothers, when we look at how uh, Bassett did... And last year, not last year's Richmond, but I'm pretty... Was this the one where they got in a fight at Phoenix? I need to take a gander really quick. I totally forgot. Was it Dylan or Ronnie? I forgot who was driving. Um, let me look really quick. I got to find up. Let's see. Dylan Bassett. Born a year older than I am. Good Lord. I am very, very old. Didn't make, didn't, didn't start any races last year due to the, it's been a while since we've seen this Bassett brother here. El Paso, Texas has a, has a mall called Bassett Center. And so anytime I think of that, I just think of Bassett Center. Um, yeah, they tried to get him in multiple races last year. Didn't get in due to the qualifying procedures. So I'm guessing we look back at, at Bassett's runs in the actually let me let me pause real fast. I'm gonna do a really bad job. I'm taking all this at once. All right, I'm back. I'm pr I had to I forgot that so the Bassett brothers used to be aligned with DGM, and then they decided to go. I, I gotta pause this again. And then they, I thought I had everything lined up. Hold on. Okay, sorry. I went down like four four wormholes real quick, and I was trying to gather everything around. So. Before COVID, you know, Ronnie Bassett and the Bassett brothers had partnered or had parted ways with the DGM racing group, and they were going to go on their own. And so they put money, they put investments, and they built about six cars in 2021 to go racing. Then COVID hit, and they didn't have any of the, you know, points to make their way in on and do the fact that uh, NASCAR decreased the amount of cars, you know, running in 20, 2019, 2020, um, 20 and 21. They, there wasn't anybody out there to buy points from. And so uh, the Bassett brothers weren't able to make any races outside of the lone Coda start last year with Austin Dillon in the vehicle. So come this year around, they're like, all right, we're good. Qualifying is back. We're going to be fine. They don't qualify for Daytona. They don't qualify for Atlanta. They've been planning and gaining sponsors for all these big races, and they haven't made any of the races this year. They're cho they're choosing Richmond to start here. 
I am not concerned with, and this is where I'm either going to, you know, eat crow or actually know what I'm talking about. This Bassett car for $4,700 is literally the preparation for years to make a damn race. Okay. I am not concerned about this car having a mechanical issue. I am not concerned about this car being that entirely slow. Now, granted, we can look at the practice data to see how slow they really are. I think they're going to make the race. If that is the case, Dylan Bassett, David Starr, Howie, Parsons, um, Williams, and Raja Carruth are the guys that I'm looking at to go cheap on and to use as my main punt plays because yet again, going to how I started the video, I want to play as many lap leaders as possible. I do believe we're going to have multiple lap leaders in this race just due to the fact that people are going to be changing positions on pit road. And that's mainly why I jumped in and just started talking about the guys up top and the guys at the very bottom. Um, obviously, like I said, we're not playing Jesse Wooji. Brennan Poole, if he makes the race, don't play him. They're trimmed out. Poor Mike Harmon. Like, imagine Mike Harmon did not deserve to start as many cars as he did the past couple years. Now that the series is actually back to real cars and real racing, first off, NASCAR, can we please go back to 43 cars in a series? Please. Please. The series needs that. At least 40. But um, Mike Harmon is, is, is in deep he, he, they are upper creek without a paddle. These last years, they've been building. But like, we're the small team. We're the American, you know, value drivers. You want to, we're, we're on the Trump train. We're supporting local news stations. We are supporting local law enforcement. So we're the true American value in the Xfinity series. And then now everybody's actually seeing, oh, wow, your cars are, sl your cars suck. You know what you should be doing? Let's try and reinvesting. How about you lease a motor from like Junior Motorsport or actually RCR? Uh, you know, get a motor from somebody. You know, how about we start arriving with cars that are actually fast that aren't going to overheat right when they hop on the tracks? Oh, how about you invest in some in some tires? Well, you know, we can't we can't invest in that because nobody supports us. Well, maybe instead of uh, looking at the argument of nobody's investing us, we can't buy things why aren't they investing in you well it's because you have slow cars well it's because you're not qualifying for races and so long story short i doubt my car will ever will ever really be competitive in the xfinity series ever again i don't think he'll ever remember when my car was actually driving the cars like we we take a step back we're a lot of you people remember the the bailey curry and the you know kyle weatherman duo from the last couple of years but you don't really remember years where mike Harmon was the start and park driver where he drove his own equipment was the 38th place equipment and then we're like wow man mike Harmon is a joke what's that wow weatherman just drove that hunk of junk to 28th man he's got some skill man bailey curry just drove that up to 24th and they blew a motor man he's got some skill but you got to remember, Mike Harmon would go like four. Mike Harmon and Jesse Awuji, head to head, I think Awuji might be faster. Long story short, not interested in pool. Uh, Harrison Rhodes is a very interesting little feller here. Um, I am not entirely sold on this vehicle. Because along, along the similar fate as the Mike Harmon rant I just went on, David Starr may have really been carrying this vehicle uh, for Jimmy Means, man. Last week, they're bringing in, you know, a, a a very talented class winner for the 24 hours at Daytona and, and M's and everything, and they still can't qualify into the race. And now, if you can't do that on a, on a road course, I doubt you're going to be able to get there with roads at Richmond because they've been trying to get this damn car into a race again. And so... Sure, we might see a lot of cars in the entry fee, but there's a good chance that we already we are well aware of who is not going to make the race. I doubt Rhodes qualifies. If Poole makes the race, he's going to be starting dead last, not viable for DFS. I think Bassett makes the race. Jesse Wuji, I think I I think has a good chance of not making um, the event. When we start moving up the field a little bit. Um, I think those are the main guys that we have to really worry about not making it. Like Joey Gaze, there's a real chance that Gaze doesn't make the race. Um, just due to the fact that 
uh, he needs to at least have a good Q time. One of the BJ McLeod cars might go home, but either way, like, and as I just said, David Starr is locked in. And so in terms of guys who are actually playable um, down here, we'll, we'll, we'll categorize them as green, in my opinion, here. Um, this is where we're at here. Uh, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's ten drivers in the pool as of you know twelve twenty eight on a Thursday. Uh, but this is where we're at right here in terms of, and I guess we'll we'll kind of end it with talking about the guys in the middle here. Um, uh, at least kind of bringing up guys that I think might be underowned or underpriced or whatever. I'm not interested in Creed. I actually prefer Austin Hill. I think Austin, I, Austin Hill is going to perform way better in the RCR equipment. Creed is just he's still he's still too aggressive, uh, and I do believe that Creed struggles on the short tracks uh, in in this car, not necessarily in trucks. Um, Castle's cheaper, but it's the same play as Haley's been the last couple of times. So if Castle was starting around, you know. 17th or something around along those angles then maybe but i don't think i'm gonna be on castle i would actually rather play sam mayer uh riley herbst is just doing nothing uh even with the shr pit crew i just don't see it from them moffitt's gonna be finishing 12th you know snyder's gonna be running in around 13th somewhere around there um a lot of these guys are gonna be starting where they finish uh, not interested in LeBay. Really, the only two guys here that I would bother getting to. But like I said, I don't think I'm going to if I do chase three lap leaders. If I go two, it, it's probably more viable for me and easier for me to get Brown and and Segan lines. Actually, I should just uh, do this. I don't know why I'm here. So we're here we're going we're going through the pool. You want the early week picks? This is where we're at here. Parker, oh my god, I forgot Parker's in this race. What a nerd. Oh my gosh, man. I forgot Parker's in this race. Man, remember that? Remember when remember when the Parker thing was a was 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 something for about the first eleven seconds at uh at, at Phoenix? And then people realized that oh yeah, this Parker kid has no experience in any of these cars. Um So yeah, not going to Parker. Uh, probably not going to be playing Kyle just because I don't, I don't see them getting up there. That's why, like, I, I think the pool is is honestly a bit small. Uh, I don't I don't see a lot of things changing. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, I said that wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You know, somewhere around there. That's where we're at. Might add four drivers to the pool. We're still going to have a pool of around 16 guys, in my opinion. I think this is how we chase uh, the Richmond race this week a uh, very early day on saturday uh to get everything done gonna do a live show gonna also do a watch together stream watch along stream watch whatever you call it pierce and i are gonna be and we're gonna do it on his channel uh live show will be on mine don't know if he's gonna make it i doubt he will because he has to pull a lot of stuff and, and mess with a lot of stuff for cup but i'll be doing the regular picks you know live show before lock uh, on Saturday, and then if you would like to join us, because people have asked about it for years, even before we were working together, I think this is like 2020, you know, during COVID times, so like, hey, can you guys do a watch together? Can you? So we're, we're going to do it here. If it goes well, we'll do the Trek series at Martinsville as, as well, because we're trying to pick races that are going to be not boring, that can easily turn into just, oh my God, what are they doing over there? Oh my God, this guy's an idiot. What is he doing there? Like, we're trying to at least pick uh, races that'll be interesting to at least talk about. And I'm sure we'll also read the chat and just go on other tangents and stuff. But we're going to be live Saturday if you want to tune in and, and, and hang out with us and everything. And maybe we can, maybe that alone, maybe we make you laugh. Maybe we just help you escape from your normal life or whatever. Consider joining the Patreon, supporting us below. We got F1 content, we got NASCAR content. You can go one or the other, or you can get both and really support us there. We're at 99 people on Patreon. I would love to hit 100 tomorrow, which I think we're going to do, regardless of me begging. But I would love to just keep growing this bigger and bigger. That's just where I'm at. I, I would really, really like that. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this helps you out or gives you an early idea of where I want to go with the Xfinity Series at Richmond. And just wait a few minutes, and I'm sure the Cup Series at Richmond preview video will be up shortly. So just, uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and hopefully this helps you out in some form or fashion.